Hello everyone, welcome to the seventh episode of Course Review with Kamath. In today's episode, I have with me Pratik Chavan, who studied from RWTH Aachen and he studied Production Systems Engineering course in this university. So, without any further ado, let us welcome Pratik for this session. Hi, hi Kira. Nice to be on your program finally. Yes. Thank you very much for your time and uh, looking forward to know more about the course that you studied a bit while back and hopefully this information is very useful for the students who are going to apply for similar courses in universities. So firstly, I would like to ask you if you could give a brief introduction about yourself, what you did previously before coming to Germany, before joining this course, did you have some work experience and what were the requirements? Yeah, of course, uh, I'll give a short introduction. First of all, nice to be on your program finally and uh, looking forward to chatting. So um, I'm, I'm from Pune actually, so I did my bachelor's degree in uh, industrial engineering from uh, Vishwakarma Institute of Technology, VIT, uh, comes under Pune University, it's yeah. an autonomous institute. So, um, from after that, I worked for a year at um, Tata, so Tata Autocom Systems Limited, as an industrial engineer, mm -hmm. uh, which was a great experience. And I always wanted to do masters. And um, my goal was actually not Germany, I actually wanted to apply to uh, US originally. Mm -hmm. So that time the requirements for German universities were also GRE, GRE score. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is now, but yeah, that time I had to give GRE and uh, I said, yeah, anyways I have to give GRE. So I gave uh, uh, my GRE and got a score of uh, 1390 or something, mm -hmm. so, which is relatively good. That And um, I applied to um, many uh, American uh, universities like Georgia Tech, uh, Michigan, Ann Arbor yeah. and, um, and also uh, because my best friends were also applying actually only to Germany so I applied with them uh, to uh, technical TU Berlin, mm -hmm. uh, RWTH Aachen, Hamburg University and um, KTH uh, Stockholm in Sweden. Mm -hmm. So. I got um, acceptance uh, before I could send my application to US. I already got uh, acceptance from KTH Sweden with scholarship and uh, acceptance from TU Berlin and uh, from uh, RWTH. Uh, okay. So I could choose any university I wanted and um, I went for RWTH Aachen uh, in production systems engineering. Yeah. And um, yeah, so. My reason for RWTH is because uh, obviously it's a very well-known university yes. and uh, in ranking. It has a good uh, reputation, so yeah, that's why I thought I would go for RWTH. Yeah. So uh, coming to the main question of this uh, episode, could you give a brief insight about the course that you studied? However, I see that the course is being slightly changed with the name as well uh, being Network Production Engineering. However, I see that there are a lot of similarities and a bit of modern subjects have been put in. So therefore, when you explain about your course, I believe that at, at least few of them are similar and it gives a comprehensive idea for the students who want to apply for the new course or similar courses in another universities. So if you could explain semester wise what you studied, what you went through in the four yeah. semesters, it would be great. Yeah. Um, yeah, I started in 2000, end of 2011 to 2000, end of 2013, uh, beginning 14. So that was a long time ago. And um, uh, but my course was called Production System Engineering, and um, now they've renamed it to Network uh, mm -hmm. Network Production Engineering. It's more or less the same, but um, some electives are new and a few subjects are new, you know, because you can have a focus on. Uh, Industry 4.0, the uh, new trends uh, relating, related to these aspects are uh, taught as a few, one or two subjects. Right? But more or less, uh, the basics of manufacturing technology is uh, is there. Okay. So what I studied was, um, yeah, I, have a, I brought my mark sheet <laughs> in case I forget any subjects. So um, the focus was on uh, basically three aspects. Mm -hmm. One was the manufacturing technology one and two, right? So you took both of them, and uh, 
then second one was uh, production management a and b right mm -hmm. so with a little bit of management and a um, little bit of uh, manufacturing technology so about manufacturing processes right mm -hmm. uh, cutting with defined cutting edges undefined cutting edges uh, non conventional uh, manufacturing processes uh, those were there and uh, the third focus was uh, machine tools right and machine tools one and two uh, we had and that was my area of uh, interest and uh, that's machine tools is the area where i did my mini thesis my hv my you know, students uh, uh, work as well as my master thesis in, in the area of uh, machine tools under professor prashant so um yeah this is was the main uh, sort of uh, courses which were compulsory apart from this there was uh, quality management and welding which were also compulsory um and electives um there was a huge uh, list which you can take electives the ones which i took was also also related to machine tools uh, so i took on virtual machine tools and uh, uh, simulation and laser cutting processes and uh, yeah modeling modeling of simulation manufacturing so so yeah so you can uh, with the electives you can put a focus on a uh, wide or uh, different areas whichever wherever you have interest and yeah from what i understood the course has more of uh, subjects related to production engineering or uh, like uh, the technologies behind it also are there subjects which uh, bring uh, simulation part of uh, production and uh, uh, software part of production in this course um, i think with uh, in the new scheme of things they have three different focuses they are given on the website uh, but um, the ones the, that time when, when i was doing a masters there was um, yeah there was simulation uh, programs as well and manufacturing simulation was obviously uh, like on a broader scale like uh, yeah. production um, factory simulation yeah um that wasn't there as a i mean fa factory logistics was there mm -hmm. um, as a, as a subject obviously but um, simulation software Uh, if you wanted to use and practice, then the best way is to apply as a student uh, worker or a, or a master thesis student or uh, EV job, right? Yeah. Because that's where you actually get to learn. You know, the subjects okay, you learn for the exam and uh, yeah, you learn the theory. But if you actually want to get some experience and get the feel of it, um, especially these simulation software, right? Uh, you can. Yeah, you have the you can simulate from cutting process mm -hmm. up to uh, factory logistic, right? There's a huge yeah. spectrum of uh, what you can simulate, and uh, depending on your interest and your liking, you can uh, obviously take the subjects and also do a EV job or uh, master thesis in that area, so that you get more experience. Yeah. To summarize uh, this course, uh, what would you suggest? to any student who is looking to take this course what are the key points that one should know and who should be taking this course um yeah good question um so the key summarizing the key points is as i said the focus is on uh, manufacturing so the manufacturing processes mm -hmm. will definitely be there as a, in any of the three electives which you take right mm -hmm. then um they have started uh, with this uh, focus on industry uh, in industry 4.0 and um, aspects of digitalization in, in manufacturing which is new and uh, which will definitely help later if, uh, for for students so if they go into the industry so it's good that they have updated the course and uh, made those changes um as far as uh, who this course is um yeah but for anybody who wants to get into like production and production management right yeah because um, the thing is um, many of the careers paths where uh, you want to land up in higher management level mm -hmm. uh, go through production planning production management and uh, industrial engineering and all those things right so if you are interested in that scheme of things then uh, yeah then this is definitely recommendable um it's basically um yeah gives you a lot of technical background which you need in modern manufacturing companies right yeah so um it's definitely anybody who's done bachelor's in mechanical or uh, industrial or production yeah or 
even other mm-hmm. yeah i don't know is interested in production management and production the technicalities behind it i think the in us the focus is not as much as on, on the technical aspects mm-hmm. as, uh, as it is over here as a student when we come to germany what are the careers that one can get into so do you have a brief idea on what most of the students get into after finishing this particular course yeah yeah that's a frequently asked question um before getting into that i think the most important aspect is to know that you are getting into core mechanical right mm-hmm. production engineering is uh, mechanical and uh, it has to deal you have to deal with people on the shop floor right mm-hmm. so german requirement is extremely important okay right? mm-hmm. so uh, even before considering the course right mm-hmm. even before thinking of doing production engineering in germany you should know whether you should ask yourself whether you are uh, willing to learn the language to that level that you can talk to a, a shop floor uh, worker or supervisor or whatever whatever and get your point across and understand them uh, whichever accent they have whatever it is right so you should be able to willing to uh, to do that right mm-hmm. you don't have to do that. i mean there are, there are easier ways out yeah? you just go to do an mba in us and then yeah, you can also get <laughs> get to higher management positions so before actually choosing the mechanic- uh, production you should be really clear about the fact okay hey, i'm going to core mechanical i'm going into a shop floor environment and going into a production environment so german is really important yeah um assuming that you uh, want to take the difficult path and learn german and stuff um then um, yeah you, there are opportunities you can get there a lot of all the companies over here are looking for manufacturing so jobs are not really that important uh, not that uh, difficult i would say to get um some of my colleagues have been in yeah, more or less not extremely big companies mm-hmm. but uh, the mid mid size to yeah mid to large size companies are uh, yeah are the biggest employers and you know, they are the biggest chances like uh, and lens is one of them or mm-hmm. kimberly clark uh, different fields you know yeah. doesn't have to be automobile or uh, your boss and factory it can be uh, anything you know john deere also a few of my friends are. so um yeah production any company that is has uh, intensive production fmcg products as well so uh, my next question would be what is the entry requirement what is a rough cgpa which could help a student get into this particular course do you have any brief idea on this uh um, cgpa is uh, yeah important um, i had uh, 8.6 or something mm-hmm. um which was more than sufficient i know people got off also with 7 or something so okay. mm-hmm. um yeah i mean work experience is also important uh-huh. if you have uh, one or two years work experience that would especially if you want to work in production right you just can no bachelor's and just do theory and ex- um, you know, expect to directly get a job you know, in, in germany so um yeah work experience is i think equally important as cgp right? so even if you have a cgp on a lower level but have good work experience um and good german language skills then you can still get uh, admission yeah. um are there any co curricular opportunities along uh, with this course that one can take up during the studies what is the scenario at rwth yeah there's lots lots and lots of things you can do but um, again don't forget uh, you start in india and you come directly take a flight over here you don't know the language i mean mm-hmm. most of the at least was with me right you don't know the language yeah. but don't know anybody here so even if there are opportunities for doing thousands of co-curricular activities you know it's difficult to find the find the connection or find someone who knows or can tell because things are completely different you know you've been here for some time you know there's some formalities and paperwork and you know you have to play basketball you have to know which <laughs> where to go which website to write your uh, timing of playing basketball you know so you know how it is so yeah. of course yeah, opportunities are in less swimming basketball tennis 
say like whatever you want but the language barrier is uh, understated you know mm-hmm. when you are in india you don't know how big actually the language barrier is and my last question uh, on the lighter note would be this before we want to come to a foreign country or germany in particular uh we choose the course then we do not have a lot of information we directly come and then i have seen that it's not totally as we see it from far distance so what would you like to say to the future students uh, one key point that you already mentioned is german language would help a lot if one studies before coming to germany were there any cultural shocks did you find it difficult to cope up during studies or do you have any important thing to say for the prospective students yeah yeah definitely <laughs> definitely yeah because uh, these things are more important than than the course you know, yes. course you can do any course i will you can get average student teaching student to course in any fx or ts in germany you can you'll end up having getting a job like that is not the uh, you, if you want to optimize then that's a different thing okay because um yeah the bare minimum everybody gets um the thing is some differences which you have to keep in mind is first of all obviously the language barrier which i uh, spoke about and uh, secondly uh, you have to realize because most of the indian students have the expectation okay of they have this benchmark of us right mm-hmm. they know a lot of people have gone to the us so indian people know what how the situation is in the us right yeah. and then they think okay it will be similar it won't be same but it will be similar in germany but it's absolutely not the case it's a completely different uh, society and uh, it's a completely different socio economic system right yeah um it's a socialist uh, country right um so earning a lot of people have to manage their expectations you know you know if you because your friends your batchmates will go to us and get jobs at google microsoft yahoo and whatever right um and you will be in core mechanic right so you have to know that before uh, mm-hmm. because earning opportunities uh, or the level of pay which you get in bay area and san francisco mm-hmm. is not <laughs> what you get in <laughs> yeah berlin or uh, whatever right so don't have high expect or at least should manage if you should no agree ki okay bhai uh, utna nahi hai paisa but uh, i love this uh, core domain mm-hmm. and if you have the love for core mechanics or core whatever um then this is the right place and if you don't care about money you know if you're not too much worried about then it's fine but if you really want to make a high fast career and earn money and uh, you know go to become ceo of microsoft yeah then this is definitely not the right place I think this is my seventh episode, and for the first time, uh, someone has in, in detail spoken about uh, this section, which is very important to know beforehand because then it gives a lot of clarity on the expectations that one should have. It should not be like you one comes here and then after two years finds something like this, and then they are disappointed. So, uh, yeah. thank you very much for this uh, insight along with the course insight, and yeah. with this, I. come to the end of this session i would like to thank you very much uh, for your time and uh, for the insights yeah. i you yeah. mm-hmm. really welcome i really had fun and uh, maybe we can talk about my phd in the next time because uh, i also did my phd from other peers so in the next episode <laughs> to all the viewers uh, pratik chavan has also uh, completed his phd and uh, is going to complete it i have submitted it still has to <laughs> get still have to get the defense defense so in one of the future episodes uh, we plan to speak in detail about how to get a phd what is the way to do a phd what are the tasks and how challenging it is so i would be looking forward for this session as well and in due time we meet again to speak about this indeed. Thank you once again very much Pratik for your time. Yeah, it was fun. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.